Welcome to Catchy Cartoons. Today we're going to draw C is for Chimpanzee from my Animals of the Alphabet series. So let's get drawing and learn those ABCs. We'll start by laying down some simple shapes and forms as this will be the foundation of your drawing. I'm going to angle the eye line upwards because I want the chimp to be tilting his head up. The center line will be placed on the left side of his head, so it'll be facing left with a slight turn towards the camera. We'll draw the eyes close together on the eye line and place the irises on the right side of center. He should have a tiny nose, heavy brow, a long muzzle that connects to his brow creating a mask, and a big smile with pursed lips. Draw in the jaw and finish the head with a big ear. I'm going to start his body by creating a line of action along his back. This round line gives the chimp an easy going relaxed attitude. We'll draw a relatively straight line down his chest to his pelvic area to create a contrasting form against his back. A center line down his body for its bias and a quick indication of the chest area. We want the chimp to be fully relaxed so we'll angle the line down as we kick his leg out. A simple mitten shape with finger-like toes. A chimpanzee's foot behaves a lot like a hand, so we'll draw the big toe like a thumb as it is opposable. We'll pull his other leg in close to his body, as chimps are known to do. Another simple mitt-like shape for the foot. A big broad shoulder with a long forearm resting on the leg. A mitten for his hand. We'll complete his kickback pose by having him rest his other arm on his knee. We're going to create another contrasting shape and indicating long hair at the elbows by arcing the line up towards the wrist. We'll finish our rough by quickly drawing in the hairline on his hands and feet and onto the tie down pass. This is where the drawing comes to life as we get into the nitty gritty of the drawing by defining the expression, adding details, and carving out the shapes and forms of the body. I'll make sure the eyes and nose are to my liking. Make the brow a bit smaller and we'll push the expression by indicating a brow muscle for each eye. We'll adjust the chimp's mouth by giving him a goofy open mouth smile. We'll create a lower lip and some dimension by sharply angling the line out by the mouth area and adding another line for the inner lip to finish the mouth. Let's give him some sideburns as we define the line and sketch in some hair along the jawline. The ear could be a bit bigger and we need to add some detail. We'll finish the head by indicating some hair, parted in the middle of course. As we move on to the body, remember to stay loose as we're searching for our shapes and forms. And don't be afraid to draw the line through other elements. This practice helps you be aware of the structure of what you're drawing. We'll sketch in the hair at its bottom as it's being displaced by the floor. Apply some definition to the chest area. A hint of hair at the top of his calf. And some long hair around the ankle. Since we roughed the foot in with a mitt-like shape, adding finger-like toes will be quite easy. It's just a matter of drawing the toes within the mitten. With the chimp being on the cartoony side, the hands and feet are going to be simple and graphic in design. We'll add some tufts of hair on the knee and by the ankle. and work within that mitten as we add the toes. We'll accentuate the size of the shoulders by adding big tufts of hair, a slight adjustment to the elbow, and we'll add a little definition to the palm of his hand. Adjust the shape of his thumb, the back of the chimp's hand should be hairy, and we'll add a few tufts at the wrist.
More displaced hair at the shoulders, making the chimp look very big and powerful. We'll adjust the shape of the forearm and add some definition to the hand by angling the line down to the wrist and up along the back of the hand. Add some hair to the back of the hand and wrist. And once again, work within that mitten as we draw in the fingers. Who said drawing hands was hard? Now to the second tie down pass to define the line. This is the stage of the process where we add a little polish and commit to the drawing with a darker and near final line. We'll add a hint of upper lids by making the line thicker on top of the eyes. Bang down the nose, define the bag under the eye, make sure the shapes of the face are just right, especially the goofy smile. We'll add some definition to the sideburns and jaw. We'll make sure the hair on his head and his sideburns are clear. We'll make the ear a touch bigger. And for fun, we'll add a few loose hairs standing on end. Darken up the foot. Add a crease to the base of his toes and give him some nails. This leg is looking good. We'll just define the tufts of hair. Notice how the hair lies flat on top of the foot. This adds a little bit more dimension to the drawing. We'll indicate the hair falling down his arm by quickly sketching in some loose lines. Draw the hair past the arm to show the length of the hair. Be sure to stay somewhat loose as you work on the shoulder tufts. You don't want to lose the vitality of the drawing. I want you to take note on how I've drawn the tuft of hair by the wrist, where it comes into contact with the leg. I've created some dimension by wrapping the line of the tuft over the leg with a shallow curve. The line then drops off towards the point and continues up at a sharper angle. This gives the illusion that the hair is lying on and falling down the inside of the leg. We'll just finish off the fingers and add the nails and then move on to the cleanup stage. The cleanup line is the final stage of the drawing process. This is where we apply a clean and fairly tight line. Like my B is for bear design, this design is more traditional. So I'm going to apply a fairly standard line with some subtle thicks and thins. The areas of the body where the line is unbroken by the tufts of hair will be thick, and we'll apply a thinner line for the tufts and strands of hair to illustrate the fine texture of the hair. I should mention, avoid using pure black for your cleanup line. I feel it's too harsh of a color and it can create sort of a hole in your image. I suggest using a dark gray or a darker tone of your base color. And when cleaning up, Take particular care with the eyes, mouth, face, and hands, and in this case, the feet, since they behave like hands, as they're the most important aspect of the drawing. Now it's time to add some color. We'll color the chimp a gray-blue in a mid-tone. You can go darker if you wish, but not too dark. You don't want the lines to get lost against the dark block of color. And for some contrast, we'll use a bluish pink for his skin. You can use a gray blue for his skin as well, as some chimpanzees' skin is the same color as their hair. But I'd advise you to use a lighter gray blue to clearly define the skin from the hair. The nail should be a bit darker than the skin, and will give the chimp nice amber eyes. And our chimpanzee is finished. Please hit the like button if you found this video helpful. Click the subscribe button if you want to see more catchy cartoons videos. Click the bell button to be notified of my next video. Please share this video with your drawing friends and leave a comment. Send me your drawing of this chimpanzee as it might appear in a catchy cartoons video. Thanks for watching.